All right, just wanted to go through two passages of scripture in light of the heretic Rich Pinkowski and just show how it perfectly describes him. You say, why are you going after Rich Pinkowski? Well, because he is lost, he's wicked, and he is a very, very dangerous false prophet. If you want to know why I go after him, I'm starting to go after him so much, is uh, I'll just link in the description a playlist of some of the videos Eric Love did uh, exposing Rich, and you're going to see that Rich Pinkowski is a very uh, somewhat murderous guy. He is very, very wicked, and the way he treats people, the way he rails on people, I would say he's even worse than Brian. In many ways, I would say he's probably like like way worse than even Brian Dunlinger. I mean, even Brian Dunlinger, it, you know, he, uh, he makes Brian Dunlinger blush. I'll just put it that way. In the way that he treats people who don't who talk against him, the way he treats people who disagree with them, you know, it's it's very very wicked. And I'll just link it in the description. I mean, he actually made fake Facebook pages, you know, impersonating Eric Love's, uh, you know business where he you know how he makes a living he tried to get tried to ruin that he sent him death threats his followers did at least um all kinds of wicked stuff they tried to dox him you know because eric love actually rebuked rich pankowski so again i'll link those in the description just showing the kind of wickedness and why this guy needs to be marked and, and warned against actively he needs to be actively marked and warned against but going to read two passages of scripture that really perfectly describe pankowski and his wicked cronies you know again they make brian dellinger and his cult blush we're going to show the scripture first i'll read from second peter chapter two okay good it gives a very good accurate description of pinkowski i call him warriors for antichrist second peter chapter two uh the whole chapter I'll, I'll read the entire thing but they were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction yeah, damnable heresies. Yeah, like Minkowski sent teaching a Roman Catholic false gospel of you having to basically merit your salvation by your works. It, it, I've covered this in other videos. What Rich Minkowski basically teaches is the atheist, Satanist, Luciferian philosophy of my good works will just outweigh my bad works, essentially. That's what it comes down to. If you're trying to justify yourself by your holiness, you know, because they'll say, well, salvation is through Jesus Christ. See, they're a bunch of fork-tongued devils. They'll say salvation is through Jesus Christ, but then you have to live this way. You have to do this. You can't do this. You can't do that. And if you do it, then you lose your salvation. So in other words, it's not Jesus Christ paid for my sins. It's Jesus Christ plus me having to merit my salvation by my works. You know, and they'll say, oh, we're not teaching work salvation. Yeah, you are. If, if you're adding anything to what Jesus Christ did for salvation, you're teaching a works-based gospel. You're not solely putting your trust in Jesus Christ. You're putting your trust in Jesus Christ plus your holiness. That simple. So yes, yeah, so they are they are bringing in damnable heresies. And if you think you can lose your salvation, you're you're a work salvationist. You're a heretic. Plain and simple. Because what it comes down to is that you know because here's how it works. Eternal security. I'll, I'll just sum it up this way. And I, I've done numerous videos proving eternal security. There's so many scriptures that debunk the satanic, Luciferian, Catholic lie of conditional security. You know Ephesians 1:12 to 13. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4:30 talks about that. Uh, John chapter 10 verses 27 to 30, you know, uh, Jesus Christ says you'll never perish and he's the one that saves you. John chapter 6 verses 35 to 40, uh, that you, you won't be, you won't be cast out. You will not, he will not lose you. Uh, first Peter chapter one, verse three to five, you're kept by the power of God. You have a place in heaven reserved that does not fade away. I mean, just scripture after scripture after scripture, John chapter five, verse uh, 24, you will not come into condemnation. John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. You will not perish, but have everlasting life. I could just go on and on and on. And what it comes down to is that eternal security is simply just understanding God is who saves you. You don't save yourself or merit your own salvation. God is who, is who provides salvation. But you see, if you're a, a conditional security heretic, you don't fully trust in Jesus Christ. You may, you may lie to yourself and think you do, but really you're trusting in yourself. You're trusting in Jesus Christ plus what you do to, say, to basically merit your salvation. It's Roman Catholicism. That's all that it is. It's just the, the satanic lie of ye shall be as gods. You know, my good works can outweigh my bad works. It's it's atheist, Satanist, Luciferian philosophy. You know, that's why I say that Pinkowski and his, his bunch are just a bunch of religious atheists. They have the same wicked mentality that I did when I was a lost hellbound atheist. That simple. Anyway, continuing. Uh, verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Kind of like how they rip on the true gospel and how they attack truly saved brethren. And I, I need to also just get this off my back as well. I often get accused of teaching a, a lordship salvation works-based gospel because I say that the Holy Ghost changes you and there's a new birth that happens after salvation. You know, okay, here's, I'll just sum it this way. What I believe about salvation is basically what the Bible teaches, that 
Salvation is repentance towards God and faith toward Jesus Christ. And when I say repenting of sin, okay, people think, oh, you're saying you got to stop sinning. No, repenting of sin in, in the context of salvation is you come to God in sorrow and godly, basically godly sorrow over your sins. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8 to 11. You have godly sorrow over your sins. That's simple. That's repenting of sin. And then you put your faith in Jesus Christ. You're putting your trust 100% in Jesus Christ. And then after salvation, the Holy Ghost comes in and cleans your life up. After salvation, you're made a new creature in Christ. Some good scriptures on that are, you can write these down. Second Peter, sorry, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 to 5 is a good one. Very good one. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And there's a bunch of others too. Oh yeah, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3 is another good one. Uh, there's pretty, a lot of good ones out there. I think there's also, um, I'm trying to think off the top. These aren't, these aren't in my notes. I'm just trying to uh, remember off the top of my head. Oh, there's also, um, uh, I think it's Romans chapter uh, 10 verses, uh, sorry, Romans chapter, yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. See, I don't have a good memory, so I just can't remember off the top of my head. These aren't, these aren't in my notes. I'm just kind of going off my notes, going off my memory. But, uh, wait, also John chapter, I was, here's what I was thinking of. John chapter 15 is a good one as well. It talks about how, you know, those that are in Christ will bear fruit. So, yeah, there's a changed life that comes after your salvation, but it's not to be saved or to stay saved. See, that's the big difference between me and guys like Rich Pankowski. I'm saying, yes, there is a changed life. There should be a changed life. And if there's not, there are some problems there. You're in carnal. You're, you're in sin. But you're not living holy to be saved or to stay saved. You see, Pankowski, he's doing it to try to be saved or to stay saved. That's the big difference. That's why he's lost. You see, when I say a changed life, I'm saying it's after salvation. And it's God who does the clean, cleaning up. It's God who changes your life. You know, another good one I forgot to mention too is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Another good one as well. Okay, this happens, all those verses say it happens after your salvation, never to be saved. So I have to just get that off my back because I get accused of being a lordship salvationist because I say that there's a new birth after salvation and there is spiritual regeneration from the Holy Ghost. So, so anyone who says that about me, that I'm, I'm some kind of lordship salvation heretic, uh, they're lying, plain and simple. Because I've clarified it numerous times that... I do not teach a works-based salvation. The works and the holiness are the results of salvation, not to be saved. So anyway, I wanted to point that out. But Pekoski, he rejects that. So he is uh, not saved. Second Peter chapter uh, 2, verse 3. Continue on, verse 3. And through covetousness, they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. You know, making merchandise of you, kind of like how Pinkowski doesn't actually work for a living. He just begs for donations and does these, these stupid little live streams and just begs for donations. You know, I actually work. You know, I, I actually have a job. I actually earn my money. I, I, like my job that I have is very physically demanding. Just in fact, a few days ago, I cut my finger, got an infection. And I was told by the doctors that I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't use my infected hands to do stuff. So I was, I was limited to just one hand, but guess what? I still went to work and that night and still did what I had to do. Why? Because men are supposed to work. And I'm not trying to be a fool and glorying, but you know, like some people, especially from my generation, would probably use that infected hand as, oh, I can't go to work now. No, I only, have, I may only have one, be able to use one hand, but guess what? Hey, I still have one hand, so better than nothing. You know, why? Because that, that's the kind of mentality a Christian man should have. You know, the desire to work, not to, not to be a workaholic. Okay, that's not that's not of God either. Being a workaholic is definitely is also wrong too, because you're putting your work above, you know, family time. You're putting your work above. You know, being with the Lord, spending time with in study, but being lazy is is very very wicked. I've done videos against that, and Pankowski does not actually work. You know, his work to him is simply just doing a live stream and going out and street preaching, aka just railing against people for a few hours. That's not work, okay? You're okay. Like I I I want to just get this off my back as well, and and this video is gonna be a lot longer than I expected because I'm only three verses into this. How many verses are in this chapter? Twenty two verses. So. You know, this is going to buckle up. This is going to be a long ride. But, you know, don't like, like, I, I like, I, it's kind of annoying. And I, I really get sick and tired when I see, you know, young Christian guys, especially from my generation, try to use, oh, I, I'm going to serve the Lord and have some kind of excuse not to actually get a job and work. You know, I'm not saying all, I've, I've seen that people try to do that. I'm not saying everyone does that. I've just seen that myself and it really kind of ticks me off because I, I work a, a, a pretty physically grueling job. And I still manage to find time to make these videos and spend time in study. Again, I don't want to be a fool and glorying, but this kind of stuff is, is very prevalent, especially in my generation. Uh, I'm Generation Z, by the way. I was born in 2001. But, 
it's a uh, it just gets pretty annoying but Pekoski he doesn't work hit work to him is just doing his little live streams or whatever I do have a donation button on my videos but I'm not just going around begging for donations if you want to donate fine go ahead whatever you know glory to, all glory goes to, to the Lord but you know I don't work I don't uh, depend on that to survive you know that's why you'll see okay again this video is going to be so long i don't really care that's why you'll also see pinkowski constantly talking about on facebook oh google demonetize us google demonetize us why because he relies on the internet for money you know if if, if google you know i'm, I'm not even monetized I, I i think i i can't i think i'm i think i might be monetized on rumble uh which i i wasn't that wasn't my original intention apparently i just got monetized i, I think i might have just press the wrong button or whatever but either way uh you know, I even even if I was to get demonetized, let's say even I got demonetized on Rumble, you know, uh, it wouldn't affect me because I actually work. If YouTube were just to, to delete my channel, if YouTube were just to delete all my social media, okay, whatever, I'll just keep going to work like I normally do, make a new channel and just start from scratch, whatever. But you see, Pinkowski, same thing with Brian Dellinger too. He's no different. The reason why Brian Dellinger and P Pinkowski are so desperate to try to discredit those who rebuke them is because if they were to be exposed. And shown like the but the, the liars they are, people would leave them and stop sending them their money. So, because they depend on you know, their followers for money, they can't they can't have it when someone exposes them because then they'll lose followers and thus lose money. That's what it comes down to: the love of money. But anyway, this video is going to be way way longer than I intended, but who cares? Glory to God. Second Peter chapter three verse five down to verse five now. Actually, sorry, verse four. I think I might have forgot verse four. For if God spared not the angels that sin. But cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, that's verse six. Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after shall live ungodly. The Sodomites, the LGBT perverts out there. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. You know, one of the things I never understood about Pinkowski and his little cult is how they can just on a regular basis go to these these events. I'm not against street preaching. I think it can be effective in, in, in many situations. But after a while, especially when you go to Mardi Gras and that kind of stuff, I mean, I've seen videos of it, and just seeing videos of it made me want to throw up, you know? Again, street preaching, I'm not against that. I think it's it can be very effective. I think it's pretty great, especially in the godless Western world we live in right now. But, you know, to just do it on a regular basis and not even appear to be vexed. You know, because I've seen street preachers who do it and they're, they're vexed, you know. And hey, and rightfully so. It's disgusting what goes on there. You know, I'm vexed when I go to into my town and I see all this other stuff like this, this sodomite rainbow walk just, that's right down the street from me. I'm vexed too. But how is it that Pankowski and his little cult can go to all these like, disgusting events and not even appear the slightest bit vexed? It's it, it, kind of weird. I don't understand why, the, why that is. You know, and considering the kind of filthy perversion that comes out of his mouth, I'm not surprised, to be honest, because I'm, I would not be surprised if behind closed doors, he's a stinking pervert behind closed doors. I would just not be surprised if he was some kind of stinking rotten little pervert behind closed doors. And again, I, I need to cover this as well. If you think I'm being too harsh on Pinkowski, just watch Eric Love's videos that he did showing the wickedness of Pinkowski, and then we'll talk. Because believe me, Pinkowski needs to be sharply rebuked and called out. Okay, so go watch Eric Love's videos, then we'll talk. So anyway, verse 8. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their own lot. Oh, I already read that. Verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Good description of uh, Pinkowski. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Kind of like how Pinkowski and his followers rip and rail just wickedly and fleshly as well, rail on, on anyone who holds the King James Bible alone. You know? Why? They're speaking they're speaking evil things they didn't they know not. That simple. They are, are very, very wicked people. Uh where's it? Let me make sure I'm full screen again. 
and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, because as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you. Here's a good one. Look at verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart have they have, exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. That pretty much sums up Pinkowski right there. He's an adulterer. He's an unrepentant adulterer too, by the way. You know, Eric Love covered that in his videos. He has eyes full of adultery. Plain and simple. Verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were uh, clean escape from them, who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Again, Pankowski is a servant of corruption. Go watch, again, I keep referencing this, go watch Eric Love's videos. I'll link to some of my videos too. Pankowski is a servant of corruption. Plain and simple. And he needs to be actively marked and rebuked, which is why I plan to do many more videos exposing that wicked devil. So stay tuned. So yeah, he's a servant of corruption. Uh, make sure I'm full screen again. I keep forgetting if I'm full screen. Because there have been times where I'll do a video and like, I think I'm full screen and I'm not. And I have to redo the whole thing. It's a mess. But anyway, verse 20. For if after they escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had better for, been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, a dog is turned to his, uh, to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Okay, That entire chapter, pretty much word for word, describes Pankowski and his goons. Now the other passage I want to read is in Jude. Let me read that. Uh, again, I'm going to read the whole chapter there as well, the whole passage. Not going to leave any stone unturned. Jude chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called, Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and extort you, that, they, that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Sorry to all the uh, Roman Catholics out there and to all the other cults out there. The Christian faith has was once delivered unto the saints. The Roman Catholic Church is a satanic heretical cult from the pit of hell. So, just a side note there. That was free. That wasn't part of the notes. Verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of, or, of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Hikoski does that through this false gospel. I will therefore put you, verse 5, verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. Verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, uh, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities that built them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers, defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. I covered that earlier. Pankowski speaks evil of dignities, as do many of his followers. And they're a bunch of filthy dreamers that defile the flesh. You know, behind closed doors, I guarantee it, they're a bunch of stinking rotten perverts by the way they talk in public. Verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about the wind of winds, trees, whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering, wandering stars to whom the, is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Yeah, foaming out your own shame. You know, Pekoski spewing out all of his garbage 
and his little live streams. Again, I'll say it again. Watch Eric Love's videos, then we'll talk. If you think I'm being too harsh. Verse 14, And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. Let me make sure I'm full screen. Yeah, I am. Which they have commit, ungodly committed, and of, of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Again, Pankowski ticks that box there as well. He has men's persons. He's trying to impress people. He's trying to impress his followers, trying to impress other cult, you know, cult, street preaching cultists he, he goes out with, street preaching Catholics, I'll put it that way. You know, he has men's persons to admiration. That's why he loves to brag about, oh, we got drag queen story hours shut down. We did this, we did that. You know, because he, he's prideful too, by the way. Continuing. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Pre-trip rapture right there. Looking for the mercy of Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist. Uh, and of such, as some, and of some have compassion, making a difference, while others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, and with exceeding joy, to the one, one so sorry, to the only God, to the only wise God or Savior, be glory, and majesty, and dominion, and power, both now and forever, Amen. Okay, both those chapters. Describe Rich Pankowski and his cronies to a T. That simple. So I just wanted to show those two verses in light of Pankowski's wickedness. He needs to be exposed. And I'll, again, I'll be, doing, I'll be doing many more videos exposing him. And I'll be linking EJ's videos in the description as well. Pankowski is a wicked, lying Satanist who is doing damage to the body of Christ. And he, his followers are a bunch of militant cultists who would gladly, I, I'd say, I would be not surprised if they would gladly want to kill people who speak against Pankowski. Because the way they treated Eric was was very very almost almost threatening i'll put it that way it was it was borderline illegal pretty much so anyway don't be deceived by pekoski don't be deceived by his cult may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with all the brethren goodbye Thank you.